Today, I'm gonna to take you with me on a journey through a few night shifts in ICU. But before we get into it, I should probably explain what an ICU is. Intensive care units or ICUs or ITUs are specialized hospital wards designed to provide treatment and constant monitoring for people facing severe illnesses. And these units are equipped with highly trained doctors and advanced monitoring equipment. Patients in ICUs often present with challenges in one or more organ systems, such as the inability to breathe independently. The spectrum of conditions that necessitate intensive care is really diverse. We see patients that have been in road traffic accidents, head injuries, falls or severe burns. And then we have patients with acute health events like heart attacks or strokes, critical infections like sepsis or severe pneumonia and major surgeries. Some surgeries are planned and they're admitted to ICU as part of their recovery and some surgeries are performed in an emergency measure in response to complications. So yeah, it's a really important part of the hospital. As for working there during the night, it can be a lonely place. One unmistakable aspect during the night shift is the reduction in staffing compared to the daytime hours. During the night shift, the unit becomes quiet with constant monitor beeps and the soft footsteps of a few doctors and nurses overseeing the patients. During these hours, I always feel a strong sense of responsibility. While the world sleeps, you're awake and vigilant because you're a guardian of these critical care patients overnight. So teamwork and good communication becomes especially important. Let's get into the vlog. Good morning, team. Or should I say, good afternoon. So it's day number one. Well, it will be night number one. It's around one o'clock. Just woke up, had a shower and brushed my teeth. So now I'm going to get downstairs, do some journaling, some reading, and then, yeah, probably go to the shops just to pick up some things for the night shift and some snacks for my friends. So yeah, I'm tired. So bed has been tidied. I'm actually quite hungry as well. Um, I normally do intermittent fasting. So when you're on nights, it kind of messes up your entire routine. So I need to think about, well, just think a bit more about what I'm going to be eating uh, today and tonight. So I don't go overboard on the calories because it's quite easy to do that. So I'll be taking some healthy-ish snacks, uh, obviously high in protein. Yeah, maybe I'll show you uh, what I get as well. So I'll see you guys in a sec. I've also just remembered that I have a dentist appointment today. So I can take you guys with me and in the days um, of the nights, if that makes sense. I find myself just doing a lot of admin stuff, editing my YouTube videos and just trying to be as productive as possible. Uh, it's quite difficult because if I end up working the whole day and then working the whole night, then uh, you do get tired quite quickly towards the end um, of the night shift. So especially around like four or 5 a.m. Uh, it's normally when I feel it hitting me the most, but if the night shift is busy, which you know sometimes it, it is uh, like really busy, then um, you kind of just have to get on with it. So time to meditate for a few minutes, um, have my morning coffee, and get some work done and then we'll go to the dentist. Also, I've just realized that my vest is inside out. Time to meditate. Cool, so I am actually getting quite hungry, but there is literally no time to eat because I need to go to the dentist. Finally made it to the dentist. Let's go inside. So for some reason I have to fill in this form every time I come to the dentist, which is just a bit weird, but it is what it is. So let's fill this in, shall we? So now we wait. So that actually went quite well. Um, had a clean and a checkup. And my dentist is really, really sweet. She um, explains things really well, uh, which is something I like. And it's something I try to do with my patients in the hospital as well, just because being in the hospital can be quite an intimidating place. Kind of like the dentist, really. A lot of people I know don't really like going to the dentist, but I don't really mind it. 
Okay, so first meal of the day, we've got some rice and meat and we've got a protein yogurt. So let's have a look. Definitely need one of these just because I'm gonna get tired later and um, sometimes there isn't coffee, so. So Tesco Express is obviously limited in its high protein snack range. So I'm stuck with this bar, which has 10 grams of protein. I do have some food with me that I'll have later, but um, I do like to get some snacks and things for everyone. So there's normally um, five or six of us um, in ICU working overnight. So it's always good to yeah, get some stuff for the team. So I've got some Jaffa cakes. I've got some sweets as well, actually, that they can have. And maybe something else as well. I'm struggling to carry all this and vlog at the same time. But yeah, we've gone for some Pringles. And I'm going to get some protein yogurt. I don't know if you can see that down there. I've already got one with me in my bag, but another one might be a good idea, actually. Or maybe like a protein pudding. Yeah. Okay, so just walking into the hospital now. It's dark, it's cold, it's windy, and it's been raining as well, so yeah, wish me luck. Just had a walk through the emergency department and it's looking quite busy. There weren't that many empty seats. Okay. Time to go and get changed. Go. And this is where we pick up our uniform. That looks good. It's uh, fine, changing it. Looked. There you go. So when we get on shift, it's important for us to restock the trolleys. So in each ICU pod, there's a doctor's trolley. Now it's time to restock the doctor's trolley uh, with a few bits and bobs. Most of the things you need for procedures are in here. So you have things like syringes, transfusion sets. Uh, if you want to do a heart tracing, you've got the electrodes here, pads, ultrasound stuff, jelly down there, and yeah, blood bottles as well loads of those uh, all the syringes and things are here and yeah pretty cool you've got these uh, surgical gloves as well sterile gloves some flushes some random bits and bobs dressings and and all sorts so i'm just firing up the computer uh, we rely on computers a lot, actually. There's maybe five or six different systems that we use. One for ordering blood tests and scans and things. One for actually visualizing uh, the scans and x-rays. And then there's another one for the notes that we take um, and that records all the observations and things. And then there's another one we use for uh, handover information. Then we have the GP records and things for the patients. So. Yeah, there's a lot of different computer systems you have to rely on and it would make it a lot easier if it was all under sort of one system but i think that's asking a bit too much uh, so what i'm doing now is i've just seen a new admission they've just come in they've had an operation and some patients need additional monitoring after their operation so i've just seen one now and i just have to type a few things uh, the examination findings and whatnot and then i've got a couple of other patients to see some are quite sick um, and need to um, need to be reviewed so i've just finished seeing a patient uh, and i've just documented the findings 
Um, and now, feeling kind of hungry, and it is midnight. Haven't had my meal yet, so I might have that maybe around 2 a.m. It's so weird on a night shift when you're constantly hungry and f your body needs fuel. Um, but at the same time, it's quite tempting to snack on uh, like junk food, um, which I have brought some actually um, from the shop we did earlier. So that is an option as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go have a coffee, eat some food, and then come back and see if the nurses need a hand with anything or you know, sometimes it's good just to just walk around and, and have a glance through and see how they're doing and if they need any help with anything or if they have any questions I do have a phone that um, they can contact me on uh, so that makes it quite easy um, I don't have to be on the ward all the time but at the same time it's, it's actually quite nice just being here I can see uh, I mean it's quite dark but I can still see if any nurses need a hand. They're normally just wandering around. Uh, does someone need me now? I think so. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go, but I will. Yeah, see you guys later. So it's time for my first meal. And we have some rice and meat. And funky looking spoon. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've been sat down for ages. I tend to not sleep much on night shifts. I just prefer, yeah, I, I don't really like it. Predominantly because of the sleep inertia you get. I've done a video on that, I'll link it below somewhere. So it's five o'clock in the morning and it's pretty quiet, unless you're on the wards, in which case it's manic. Uh, I'm just going for a little walk just to stretch my legs. <laughs> yeah, I need to stay on the move just because get really tired otherwise I'm just sat in one place just typing or whatever so it's good to take regular breaks and once my little walk is done I'll head back to the ward and see what needs doing I know I need to take blood from a couple of patients um, but it's it's only just gone five so it's better to do that a bit later on in the morning like six or seven so that when the uh, morning team come on the ward, they'll have all the, the bloods and things ready. It's eerily quiet at night. Do I get another coffee? Mm. Maybe. All right, taking a quick breather now. Being a doctor, especially in ICU, is like being caught in a constant whirlwind of emotions, decisions, and responsibilities. It occupies a significant chunk of your mental real estate. The demands are restless, and every moment is charged with a sense of urgency that I've not really experienced in other departments apart from working in neonatal intensive care. The weight of the responsibility is genuinely palpable, and it doesn't magically disappear when I step outside the ICU doors. It follows me, etched into my thoughts, and sometimes it feels like it never truly leaves. Back to work we go. So night one complete. Time to go home and get some sleep. It was relatively busy actually. It was, uh, didn't get too much time to chill. Um, although I sort of rested on a sofa for a bit. I almost fell asleep, so. Maybe next time. So night number two, I'm just in Tesco's, looking for some healthier snacks for the night shift. 
and for my team. Um, so I haven't actually managed to film anything uh, after I went home because I was just so tired. But I slept pretty well all the way until like three o'clock, so can't complain. And I did fit in a gym session as well, which is good because I haven't been for a few days. So did a little back and buys workout. So that was good. One of these. So a huge row of ambulances behind me. Looks like it's gonna be a busy night. So I will catch you inside, just need to get changed. And then stick my food in the fridge. And then we can do the handover process where um, they essentially tell us what's been going on with the patients. And yeah, the night can begin. All right. My backpack is actually full to the brim with snacks and food, so, oh. That's one thing I forgot. Oh, I think I forgot my water bottle. Oh dear. It's fine. We'll just drink coffee. So I'm just restocking one of the doctor's trolleys with a few bits and bobs. It's been relatively busy, especially at the start. We had quite a few new patients coming in to ICU, and at the same time, quite a lot of patients leaving, so all being discharged to the wards. So when there's like a high turnover of patients, it can get quite busy. So lots of jobs and patients to, to review, and quite sick ones too. So yeah, it's been fun so far. So I've just managed to find a few minutes to document a few things. Oh boy, finally, finally done. Night number two. It was quite a tiring one. First few hours of the night was kind of non-stop. We had a few admissions and they're all really ill. So I have to do loads of tests and just keep a close eye on them. And the nurses were contacting me quite a lot for various different things. So yeah, my phone was going off nonstop, probably around 4.30 to five. It must have rang like 20 times. So yeah, I didn't really get, get much chance to rest, uh, but I did have my food which was good. And I think I had a bit too much caffeine last night as well. Um, because I feel kind of awake, even though I'm still really tired. So a time for the drive home and then getting some rest. And then actually I'm seeing a close friend of mine for some dinner. He's, um, he's in town, so it'd be a good opportunity to see him. I haven't seen him in a while, so we'll go eat some good food and then I'll, uh, go back to the hospital. Day number three. Last night was actually quite fun, even though it was busy. Um, I was getting called a lot, I had to see a lot of patients and review them and water scans and tests and all sorts. And yeah, it was quite, um, quite a busy night. So hopefully I'll have more chance to, to rest tonight, but We'll see, sometimes it's just the nature of the beast. It just gets really busy and there's nothing you can do about it. So time to head into town and get some food. See you there. I saw Pret, so I thought it'd be a good idea to get some caffeine before I start my shift later. Cool, right. thanks man. Right. Thank you. So I'm just arriving at the hospital now. I had a really, really good dinner with a close friend of mine. And uh, we went to Wagomas Shock. Uh, quite good actually, had a hot pot, 
chicken thing with some chili squid. So no complaints, I'm well fed. I also had a coffee as well. Yeah, now I'm basically at the hostel. Gonna get changed, go to handover, see what's going on. And then, uh, yeah, get cracking with work. <sighs> Quick change into scrubs and we're ready to go. Cool, so I've just finished typing up some notes and I've checked my email as well. And now I think it's time for a coffee. It's almost midnight and probably a snack as well. So yeah. One thing that is a little bit annoying about night shifts is that I've mentioned this before, but you kind of tend to overeat, I find, because we wake up sort of hopefully in the afternoon, um, sort of the day of your night shift, and then you obviously need to eat. So this is a portable x-ray machine. Most of the patients in the ICU are on some kind of organ or life support, meaning that taking them down to x-rays is not always easy. So there's a portable one here that we use. So last shift, done and dusted. Feels so groggy and disgusting, <laughs> having been up all night. But it was a good shift. I learned a few things, had a few traumas. So I went to the emergency department and also had a couple of admissions to our unit. Some um, post-op patients uh, that had neurosurgery, which was cool. And yeah, had a few bits and bobs, some issues to sort out over the night and some pretty unwell patients. So yeah, it's good. I feel like I've made some kind of a difference today or tonight or last night. <laughs> yeah, so time to head home now and maybe get something to eat and then go to sleep. But I'm gonna try and not sleep too much because otherwise I'll have um, broken sleep like later tonight. So yeah, maybe sleep for a couple of hours and then yeah, take it from there. So hope you guys have enjoyed the video. <laughs> Let me know what you think and I can do more of them if you like. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.